morning and welcome to Sim World Today, Thursday, October 3rd edition. I am Marsh, joined in the booth this day by J.K. Candel. Good morning, J.K. How you doing? I'm good, Marsh. Happy October. Time for our viewers at home to kind of get their pumpkin spice in, get their Halloween costumes. It's been, it's been a great week. It's been very fun. So it's kind of nice to be back on Sim World Today to kind of talk about it. Don't put your pumpkin spice requirements onto me, okay? That's all I ask. I'm we not a pumpkin four... spice guy either, but... I am, actually. We had four top 25 teams, or games, rather, in action. We're talking about three of them, mostly because one of them was an absolute bloodbath with Tennessee doubling up Syracuse. Uh, number six team in the nation looked like they could be deserving of number one. We'll recap the other three. We're also joined by Wisconsin's Tamir Johnson to close out the show. But let's get rolling where our night got started last night, and that's Miami defending champions in Marquette. They hold off. Miami does a 90-89 win over Shaka Smart squad. A competitive game. Marquette was in this thing throughout it. Alex Rodriguez in his freshman debut looked dynamic. But let's start with the winners, JK, where this team looked exactly like we thought. Exceptionally deep. Five players finish in double figures. Outside of some missed free throws, they could have avoided all the late game drama. But the Hurricanes, 1-0 for the first time. And this is their first 10 sub-10 point win in over a season. Got to give credit where it's due. A lot of the buzz on Miami was going towards the guys like Kevon Jackson, Dominic Bianco, Jermaine McLemore. But I want to give a shout to Richard Hennessy. First ever Sim World U game. 14-15 double-double. That's a true dog right there. This Miami team is well coached. They have some guys that can shoot the three well. I think if they see development from Jackson and Bianco from long range, I think that there's... No telling those new heights that Miami can eclipse this season. There's a reason they're no, they're no, there's a reason they're number one in the country to begin with. There's a reason they won it all last year, and then you double up on that by adding both Jackson and Hennessy. They kind of showed we are what we thought they are. But I'm just impressed with the fact that it's, that we're still kind of that's surreal that we're still kind of back and that. Miami it has not even has not looked to lose has not looked to have lost a step at all over the summer. Well, they know not only didn't look like they lost a step, they also looked like they might have gained a couple, right? Kavon Jackson was fantastic, 15 points. He shot 7 of 14. Yeah, there's some room for improvement as a three-point shooter. You mentioned Richard Hennessy with his double-double. Don't forget the fact that he had three blocks. Harland Hoffman, not a name I think we thought we were going to be calling out, but in 13 minutes, 14 points, 7 of 8. As a team, Miami shot 63%. If you're Marquette, you're walking around saying, we think we can slow down this offense that scored in triple figures on a consistent basis last season, that likes to run up and down the floor, and you got welcomed into, that's just simply not really going to be an option all the time. Miami rules. Let's go to Marquette, though, because they did not look like the 24th ranked team in the country. They arrived on opening night. Alex Rodriguez, 30 points in 31 minutes on 21 shots. Marcus Lefot, a nice simrol prepped. Good to see him back in action. 22 points. It just felt like for Marquette, while they had good pieces, it was this whirling dervish of a defensive attack that they could not contain. But you had to feel positive about their prospects. I know they only lost by one. They had a chance there at the end. Marcus Lefot's triple does not fall. But barring some really unforeseen circumstances, Miami kind of had this thing wrapped up. Miami, though, still has to feel confident in what they put out there. Absolutely. You're still the defending champions. You still managed to win a game like that. But remember, it's still Sim World U. Anything can happen any given night. I've seen cra crazier things happen before. And it, losing to Marquette, even if they did end up losing to Marquette, I wouldn't put a big skirmish on Miami for that because look at how good Marquette looked last night. Alex Rodriguez really impressed me in his first ever Sim World U game. You mentioned Marcus Lefa. This is a team that is 24th in the country, but they're still nationally ranked and still going to be atop the Big East. So got I got to respect the way that they kind of handled Miami, even though Miami, even though Miami's death did ultimately like propel them to that victory. All right, let's move to Texas, Colorado, second game of our uh, broadcasted doubleheader. Number nine, Texas, on the road, gets an 89-85 win. Big nights from Vincent Magic and Arthur Lattimore. Magic 27-7, Lattimore 19-10, three steals. This was a team that seemed to get everything that they needed down the stretch. They shot 60% from the floor. Texas was... 
Dominant Arthur Lattimore, I thought, looked fantastic. Vincent Magic with the ball in his hands also looked very capable, especially in an expanded role as a scorer. I really liked what I saw out of Vincent Magic. Arthur Lattimore was a guy where I I knew what he was capable of, and I'm not really surprised to see him doing what he did last night. But Vincent Magic was really mostly known for his playmaking at the Sim World Prep level. He led Sim World Prep in assists last season. He's a guy that was given a much bigger offensive role, and he and he ran with it. He did he did not um, did not waste the opportunity. He looked, in the first half, they were giving him clear lanes to the basket. He was showing his finishing ability. And then in the second half, he made a couple nice jumpers. And he, and he still had six assists. This is a guy that, you pair him up with Arthur Lattimore, I think it's going to be the best case scenario for both of them. They look like they could be the number one, they could be the best one two punch in their conference. Uh, what I found impressive was Arthur Lattimore going up against a really competent front court, especially Brian Vaughn for Colorado, did not seem to face him. He, on multiple occasions, was getting into the paint. He had five offensive rebounds. He kept possessions going. Down the stretch in this one, there was multiple possessions where Colorado looked like they got a stop, and then they just simply could not maintain that defense because Arthur Lattimore was in there getting second-chance opportunities and overpowering everybody inside the paint. For Colorado, I think this is a positive start. We're going to get a lot of that. You rally back. You were down by 12 in the opening half. Um, you're able to make this thing a little bit closer with a nice 50-point second half. You needed that type of comeback. This is going to be a building process for Colorado as they try to remain competitive in a Pac-12 that, that could be headlined by UCLA. Colorado's a young team. I liked what I saw from them last night. The Vaughn brothers are kind of like their leaders. And they showed up, but I'm most impressed by Jaden Thomas. Tim Stevens and I were on the broadcast last night. We were talking about who we thought needs to step up for Colorado, and the name that kept coming up was Jaden Thomas. And boy, did he do that in the second half. Clutch steals, clutch assists, finished with 16 points. It's a true freshman. He did it all. They need the scoring, and they got it from Jaden Thomas. Let's move on. Last one, UConn, Missouri. UConn trying to make it a third straight. And this is a matchup of two teams that came in with a lot of question marks. What was going to be the hierarchy for UConn? Was Missouri going to get any help? from anybody besides Jafet Towns, and we got answers to both of those questions. Let's start with the winners, and that's UConn. Boo Boo Morgan, Norman Nations, each over 20 points, 29 for Morgan in a double-double, Norman Nations with 26. Fareed Redman, a little bit of a slow start, but he ends the night with 13. This is a trio of playmakers that are going to be a problem in the Big East, and they showed that on the road in Missouri. I was most impressed with Norman Nations. He's a guy that was good at Lakeshore Drive last season, but he was the clear second fiddle to D'Angelo Jordan. So seeing him in this bona fide first scoring option role has been really nice to see. Seeing him go for 25 was something where I was surprised, but I wasn't shocked. I thought he'd kind of have a little bit more of a learning curve at the Sim World U game, but I guess I was wrong. I was very impressed to see the way he handled the Jaffet Towns matchup and Missouri as a whole. Well, if we want to talk about impressive double-doubles, Boo Boo Morgan going 29-6-11 and 11 with two steals, four of six from deep, I think is getting completely overlooked. Uh, he was dominant last night, and he's a guy that stepped in, and there was pretty much an expectation Boo Boo Morgan's going to be a capable uh, playmaker. The, the fact that he got 11 assists truthfully doesn't surprise me. I think he's probably going to be in the 6-7 to seven range on a pretty consistent basis. What did surprise me was the offensive ability that he showcased. He was the star, straw that stirred the drink, and he was dynamic in that role. Yes, Norman Nations had a great night, 10 of 18, 4 of 10 from deep. This is going to be a challenging team to slow down. Let's go to Missouri, though, where it seems like they might have a second piece, and that's Dylan Bannon. 15 points, 11 boards, 4 assists. Rebounds and assists both lead the team. Uh, shot 54%. That's a much-needed number two option next to Jafet Towns, who had 25. Yeah, but there were rumblings. There were reports all offseason saying that Dylan Bannon was their breakout candidate for Missouri. So I'm not really surprised to see it come to fruition. It was only a matter of time before someone kind of established themselves as, themselves as that number two guy behind Jafet Towns. And I I'm I'm, could not be less shocked that it was Dylan Bannon, given the reports that I was given. Well, they needed something, you know, regardless of who they thought or who they could. It's all speculation until they actually hit the floor. 
the fact that they had anything, in my opinion, is the real win here. Missouri is gonna gonna need something to go right their way in the SEC. It is not going to be an easy conference for them to be even top three, top four in. Dylan Bannon needs to be able to produce at that level. He played 24 minutes. I'd say that's got to be a higher uptick. Some of these players that they gave big minutes to just didn't show up to play. David Duffy, Kashawn Burkhalter both had really tough nights. I wouldn't be surprised, and this is across the country, if we start to see some rotational reconfigurations as teams get two, three, four games under the belt. They start to figure out who are the pieces in the starting five that can get it done and who are the pieces that can't. All right, let's move on to bring in our final guest of the day. Well, our only guest of the day, but our final point of the day, and that's Wisconsin's Tamir Johnson out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Tamir, good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. What about you? Look, Tamir, I imagine this has got to be a little bit of a challenging time. Uh, you guys don't tip off until October 24, yet around the country we're seeing games in action. So you getting a little bit of uh, cabin fever waiting to get the season rolling for yourself and the Badgers? Um, I just feel like we're just ready to play. But also, like, we see the other teams in the country and we're just learning, you know? Just kind of scouting around. What are you learning through these first couple games? Um, I see who the real contenders are. Norman Nixon is a... Wait, no, Norman Nations is a beast. I know that. Um, Missouri got their number two guy, like you said. And, you know, the Big Ten is looking very winnable for us as well. Thanks for coming on, Tamir. You mentioned the Big Ten. What Big Ten teams are you most looking forward to playing to or most looking forward to playing against when conference play opens? Um, in conference play, you know, everybody wants to play the big dogs like, you know, your Ohio States. You know, I watched a lot of women's basketball, so Iowa would be a cool environment to play in. Um and that's really it. Michigan, you know, I love watching their football team, so that would also be a pretty cool environment to play in. Timmy, this roster that you guys have, um, you know, you look up and down it, and you've got stout defenders, you've got shot creators. Um, you guys don't have a ton of size, but you got a couple pieces in there that can then buck and run inside. But it feels like a team that's probably going to be doing a lot of jump shooting. Is that the mentality going in, try to be as up-tempo as possible and then suffocate on the defensive end, or do you envision your guys going with a more slow and, and controlled offensive attack? Um, yeah, we like to play the tempo. We're going to be running quickly down the floor, you know, trying to rack up as many points as we can. For, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, we're just going to try to stop everything we can. Man. And, Tamir, obviously, you're from Florida. You are now in, you're now in Wisconsin. Definitely a bit of a culture shock. A lot colder. I can sure. say that with experience. So how, are, how have you been adjusting to campus life, and how has your relationship with Greg Gard kind of progressed since you've kind of gotten on campus? Um, our relationship has been great since day one. You know, like I said, I had to adjust to the weather a lot. Um, this, it's a lot different up north than it is way down south in Florida. Yeah, just building on that, uh, do, you ha do you have enough winter coats for when you need them? Um, what Keon Coleman said during the summer, he had to just stack up on Macy coats. I had to do the same thing. Well, we're glad you're staying warm, Tamir. We look forward to seeing you and the rest of the Badgers uh, in action at the end of the month. Uh, it's going to be a minute. What is it? October 24th, I think, is your guys' Sir. your tip-off. So, uh we look forward to finally seeing what, what all the hype is about in, in Wisconsin, especially in a conference you mentioned. You think it's winnable. Uh, it's gonna, it's my favorite conference to keep an eye on just because of the depth that exists up there. So thanks for taking the time for joining us. Uh, best of luck this season. We look forward to seeing you on the floor and hopefully having you back on the show again soon. No problem. Have a good day. All right, that is our show. Thank you to Tamir. JK, as always, appreciate you coming on here on a Thursday. We're back on Friday with Rick Blaze. There is even more. SimWorld U coverage is an avalanche of an opening week. 
Things tip off tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPN. That's Davidson visiting number five, Kentucky. Kentucky survived Wake Forest. Benari James got Davidson rolling in game one uh, of their seasons. That's at seven. And then we wrap up at 10 o'clock with an Illinois, number two ranked, 22 ranked, D'Angelo Jordan led Illinois on the road at Oregon in Eugene. So we will be recapping all of that with Rick Blaze tomorrow morning here on the show. Thanks all for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow on SimWorld TV, the only place you can see the game, be the game.